Namaskar. A warm welcome to World News and Indian Perspective on All India Radio. This is Gaurav Sharma and with me is Aditi Zumba, bringing glimpses of the major developments of the day from across the globe. Over the next half an hour, we shall bring you the latest from the world of politics, economy, sports, entertainment and more. The headlines. India says its immediate focus is to ensure that Afghan soil is not used for terrorist activities. External Affairs Minister Dr S Jay Shankar meets Slovenian President and Foreign Minister discusses key challenges facing India and European Union. India Defence Minister Rajnath Singh says India will be fully self-reliant in weapons production in the next 2 years. New Delhi extends visa validity for foreign nationals stranded due to COVID-19 pandemic till 30th of September. India pavilion in Expo 2020 Dubai to start on the 1st of next month to showcase resurgent India's march to becoming a 5 trillion dollar economy in post covid world and governors of New York and New Jersey declare states of emergency as death toll from remnants of hurricane ida rises to 9 As the nationwide free COVID-19 vaccination campaign at government facilities for those above 18 years is underway, we advise our young listeners to get vaccinated and help others get vaccinated. We also advise our listeners not to lower their guard as COVID-19 remains a threat to our health. Please stay at home unless it is essential to go out and continue to follow these three simple steps. Wear a face mask, maintain 2 meters ki doori for social distancing, and focus on hand and face hygiene. For any covid related information and guidance contact the national helpline numbers 0112397 and 1075 and now the news in detail India on Thursday said that its immediate focus is to ensure that Afghan soil is not used for terrorist activities against it Briefing media in New Delhi, spokesman of Ministry of External Affairs Arindam Bagchi said India in the meeting in Doha conveyed its concerns over the possible use of the Afghan territory for anti-India activities. Referring to the meeting between Indian envoy to Qatar Deepak Mittal and Taliban leader Sher Mohammad Abbas Tanekzai, he said we received a positive response. On a query on bringing back the remaining Indians from Afghanistan, Mr. Bagchi said India will be able to revisit the matter once the Kabul airport resumes operation. Is that Afghan soil should not be used for terrorist activities of any kind of on anti-Indian activities and we will try to focus on that element. There was a question about recognition or something like that. Let's just treat the Doha meeting for what it is. It is just a meeting and I think these are still very early days. Don't have further on that. And um, is there a time frame for assurance? Look, we uh, use that uh, opportunity to convey our concerns whether it is on uh, getting people out or on the issue of terror and anti-Indian activities. Uh, we received a positive response India and the United States had a bilateral intersessional meeting at the office official level yesterday in Washington DC they reviewed progress made since the last 2+2 ministerial dialogue in October last year and preparations for the forthcoming dialogue later this year the indian delegation was led jointly by joint secretary america and the ministry of external affairs vani rao and joint secretary international cooperation in the ministry of defense Somnath Ghosh The US delegation was led by Assistant Secretary of Defense for Indo-Pacific Affairs Dr. Eli Ratner alongside Principal Deputy Assistant Secretary of State for South and Central Asian Affairs in the Department of State Irwin Masinga Both the sides took stock of the progress and developments in the bilateral agenda under the India US Strategic Partnership including defense global public health economic and commercial cooperation science and technology clean energy and climate finance and people to people ties Minister of State for External Affairs Minashi Lekhi will be paying a 6 day official visit to Colombia and New York from Saturday This will be on her first visit as a Minister of State During a visit to Colombia from 4 to 6 September Ms Lekhi will call on the top leadership of Colombia and also hold bilateral relationships with Vice President and Foreign Minister of Colombia Ms Marta Lucia Ramirez and exchange views on regional and international issues of mutual interest. She will also be interacting with leading Indian and Colombian companies and Indian community residing in the country. 
In 2019, India and Colombia celebrated 60 years of their diplomatic relations. Colombia is an important partner of India in Latin America and India's relations with Colombia have been expanding particularly in economic and commercial sphere. Bilateral trade with Colombia for the year 2020 and 21 stood at $2.27 billion, which is a significant increase from $1.85 billion over 2019-20 despite disruptions caused by the COVID-19 pandemic. Kabul is set to announce the new Afghanistan government after discussions between Taliban and Afghan leaders were finalized, as per the reports by Afghan news agency Tolo News. Taliban leader Herbatullah Akhundzada will lead the new government, says reports, adding that a prime minister or president will likely work under the Taliban leader. Taliban official Ahmadullah Mutaki said on social media that a ceremony was being prepared at the presidential palace in Kabul. A day after U.S. forces left the Kabul airport, a team of Qatari technical experts landed in the capital to discuss the resumption of airport operation. An AFP report said that the discussion is ongoing and was initiated by Afghanistan. Meanwhile, in Panjshir, a senior Taliban leader said that the group's fighter have surrounded the only remaining province resisting its rule. The leader called on rebels, which include former Afghan military commander, to negotiate a settlement with the group. In the meantime, fighting between Taliban and resistance front in Panjshir province has intensified. The Taliban confirmed to Afghan news agency Tolo News that the Taliban fighters and resistance forces led by Ahmed Massoud have been fighting for two days and that both the sides have suffered casualties. Anna Mullah Samagani, a member of the Taliban's Cultural Commission, claimed that following heavy firing resorting by Mujahideen of the Islamic Emirate, other side has suffered huge casualties. However, a spokesman of the resistance front told the agency that 40 Taliban personnel were killed and 35 injured. Taliban have announced that Mullah Hebatullah Akhundzada will be their supreme leader under whom a prime minister or president will run the country as per a report by Tolo News. Anna Mullah Samagani, a member of Taliban's Cultural Commission, reportedly said that Akhundzada will also be the leader of the new government. Taliban's political office leader, Sher Mohammad Abbas Tanikzai, was quoted by Pajwalk.com as saying that the Islamic Emirate would declare its new government within the next two days. Samagani said consultations are almost finalized on the new government and the necessary discussions have also been held about the cabinet. In today's hotspot section, we bring you a discussion on the evolving situation in Afghanistan and its implications on the world and the region. In conversation are Ashok Sajjanhar, a former ambassador, and Nilova Roy Chaudhary, a journalist. We are talking about the situation in Afghanistan now that the United States has finally ended its military engagement in that country on August 31st. This has left Afghanistan perhaps for the first time in a very long time, entirely in a situation of flux and uncertainty. I'd like to ask Ashok, is the Indian ambassador in Qatar, Mr. Deepak Mittal, met with the Taliban representative, very senior Taliban official, Sher Mohammed Abbas Tanikzai, who is the head of the Taliban's political office in Doha, on the very day that the United States left, was Tuesday. And they seem to have established the first formal contact between the government of India and the Taliban. Now, to your mind, what is the significance of this meeting between the Indian government, which has always been very wary of any direct dealings with the Taliban? How is this meeting significant and why? I think it's very significant because this is the first time that the Indian government has really come out in the open to acknowledge its contacts with the Taliban. Right from the time of 2009-2010, when there was talk about good Taliban and bad Taliban, we had distanced ourselves. In September 2020, when the formal official conversation dialogue between the Afghan government and the Taliban started 
in doha then our ambassador had attended the meeting and our external affairs minister had also given a message it has been clear for some time that there have been some back channel consultations between the indian government and the taliban for the last several months the indian government has never come out in the open about it but one of the official spokesperson for the taliban suhail shaheen he said that yes we have been in touch with india and we have been talking i think this also became clear nilova from the fact that earlier this year our external affairs minister dr jayshankar was in qatar where the doha political office is located he was there uh, twice in the space of one week then he was also in tehran in uh, moscow just around the time when taliban delegations were also visiting those countries and those capitals it was known that uh, the indian government had been engaging taliban for some time but this is the first time that india has come out openly and acknowledged that it has these uh, contacts another important and uh, significant element in this uh, discussion was that the meeting was asked for by mr stanik zai and he is the head of the political office in uh, doha so he is an important person and also that the meeting took place in the indian embassy in uh, doha and the indian ambassador did not travel to meet uh, stanik zai but uh, it was the other way around and of course in this meeting india put forward its demand its requirements first in terms of repatriation and evacuation of all indian nationals who are uh, left there secondly that uh, an assurance that uh, no part of the afghan territory will be used against india for terrorist purposes as was uh, done when the earlier taliban government was in power from 1996 to 2001 and thirdly that uh, those who are afghans of indian origin like hindus and sikhs if they want to travel to india for religious purposes or for other purposes then they would not be stopped and that they would be allowed to come to india the final point that i would like to make here is of course uh, you have also mentioned that uh, mr sanik guy is an important entity as far as uh, the taliban leadership is concerned but uh, now that uh, the work on making the taliban government is in the final stages it is being expected that mr sanik guy would be the foreign minister of the taliban regime one more point if i could add that in the early 80s sher sanik zai he did his ima course in india so he has good connections with india he knows india and just a few days ago he had uh, spoken to our uh, news channels and he had said that the taliban government would like positive relations political cultural economic relations with india and uh, afghanistan is very happy with the projects that india has done in afghanistan and it would like india's uh, engagement and involvement with afghanistan to continue in fact uh, several uh, senior taliban leaders have been giving interviews to the indian media including mustana sakani who actually purportedly said that you know hindus and sikhs and people of indian origin and indians do not need to leave be evacuated from afghanistan they would stay in peace there as would all other minorities and uh, they seek good relations he also apparently said that uh, you know kashmir was you know an internal matter of india so at this point of time taliban leadership appears to have made all of the right noises the taliban government formation process has gone on inordinately long wouldn't you say they took over kabul on the 15th of august subsequently it's been like two and a half weeks there isn't any certainty in terms of when the government formation will be completed what is one to make of the situation in afghanistan at the moment the taliban senior leadership has been making all the right noises over the last few days when they have been speaking to the indian media 
You are right that Anna Sakani has recently stated that people of Indian origin, Hindus and uh, Sikhs uh, who are nationals of Afghanistan, they could continue to live there, their safety is guaranteed, their security is guaranteed, and they should continue to contribute to the development and prosperity of Afghanistan. They have also said, and uh, Mr. Sanikzai has also said, and Anas Akhani also, that uh, Kashmir is an internal matter of India and they have no interest in interfering in Kashmir. So I think these are very positive statements. But we'll really have to see whether the Taliban is uh, able to walk the talk, whether they are really able to implement what uh, they are saying on the ground. Because the Taliban is really riven with factionalism. And this brings me to your second question about the formation of the government. As you said, more than two and a half weeks have elapsed. And so far, uh, the Taliban has not been able to put together its government. There are uh, lots of pulls and pressures. Just very briefly, if I may say. You know, one is the Haqqani group uh, that is the controlled by the ISI in Pakistan. So Pakistan wants, it says that this is payback time. Pakistan has been helping the Taliban for the last 20 years, even before that. But particularly over the last 20 years, not only has it provided safe haven to the Taliban, it has given its all the, whether it's the training or wherewithal or military equipment, everything has been provided. So those elements which are favorably inclined towards Pakistan should be included in the government which comes up. The second is the Mullah Yaqub group from Kandahar is the place from where Mullah Omar had uh, sort of, you know, started the campaign and so to say gave uh, birth to Taliban Indeed. way back in 1994. And that wants uh, that uh, there should be much greater representation of uh, the Afghans uh, nationalists, so to say, in the government that is formed. So many other groups like uh, Jaish Muhammad, lashkar e taiba TTP, tehreek e taliban Pakistan, Al-Qaeda, you referred to the congratulatory message that has gone from Al-Qaeda to the Taliban where they have mentioned that uh, their next area of operations in addition to the Levant and others should yeah. be Kashmir. But yeah. uh, all of them have supported and helped uh, the Taliban in its fight against the Afghan government of Ashraf Ghani and the American forces. So they also want their pound of flesh. So I think there is this factionalism going on, but it is quite likely that the government might be established. And what uh, is uh, becoming clear, you know, a little bit of writing on the wall, is that it is going to have a supreme council of anything between 12 to 72 people something on the model of Iran, hmm. where there is going to be a supreme leader like the Rehber, which will be Maulana Akhundzadeh, who has really not been seen so far in public. It is stated that he is in Kandahar. Number two, the head of the government is going to be Mullah Baradar, who was the the deputy to Mullah Omar when uh, the Taliban was established. Of course, he has a challenger in Mullah Yaqub, who is the hmm. son of Mullah Omar. Let us see what happens. And as I mentioned, there is likelihood of Mr. Stanikzai becoming the foreign minister. August 31st, the day that the India met with the Taliban representative in Doha, was also the last year of India's rotating chair of the United Nations Security Council. The UNSC uttered this resolution uh, the day before that on Afghanistan requesting the Taliban to ensure that, you know, firstly, safe passage was allowed for those who want to leave the country. And second, that Afghanistan must not be allowed to be used for terrorist activity against other countries. Does this mean that the world community is gradually coming around to the point of view that they have to deal with the Taliban? So why make it uncomfortable by, you know, constantly emphasizing on that past? Yeah, just two points here, Nilova. One is that even when reference to Taliban was not made in the resolution, Russia and China still abstained from mm. the resolution. 
In fact, there were out of the 15 countries, these were the only two countries that abstained. So it was passed, you know, with the support of 13 members of the UN Security Council. You would also see that the resolution which was adopted on the 16th of August, in that also there was no reference to the Taliban as a terrorist organization because the Taliban had uh, occupied uh, Kabul and had control over the whole uh, country and Mr. Yeah. Ashraf Ghani had fled on the 15th night. I think assessment is uh, spot on because uh, the world now thinks, you see, there are still nationals of many countries which are there in Afghanistan. There are also Afghans who have worked with, the, let us say, the U.S. forces as interpreters, as drivers, or in other capacities, and the United States would like them to be brought out. Similarly, with some other NATO countries, it must have been felt, why rub them the wrong way when we have to sort of, you know, engage with them. And mm. uh, I think all countries are also very keenly aware that uh, Afghanistan has the possibility of sinking into becoming terrorist hub. Thank you very much, Ambassador Sajjan Khan. Thank you, Nilova. India has extended visa validity for foreign nationals stranded in India due to COVID-19 pandemic till 30th of September. This facility is presently available till 31st of August. The ministry said due to the situation arising out of COVID-19 pandemic, a number of foreigners who had come to India on various types of visas prior to March last year got stranded in the country in the absence of flights to their destinations. The central government had facilitated the stay of such foreign nationals within India by giving deemed extension of their regular visa or e-visa or stay stipulation period on gratis basis without levy of any overstay penalty. Defence Minister Rajnath Singh has said India will be fully self-reliant in weapons production in the next two years. Addressing the inaugural session of Gujarat BJP State Executive at Kebaria in Narmada district this morning, he said that India has exported defence production worth 17,000 crore rupees during the last two years. Mr. Singh said that the country has eliminated terrorism due to the able leadership of Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi. This is All India Radio giving you the world news for quick news updates around the clock. Follow us on our Twitter handle at AIR News Alerts. The India Pavilion in Expo 2020 Dubai started on the first of the next month is set to showcase a resurgent India's march to becoming a $5 trillion economy in the post-COVID world. The pavilion, which is a technology marvel, will not only capture the vibrant Indian culture and its past, but also the capabilities and opportunities that it presents as a global economic hub to the domestic as well as the foreign investors. Outlining the overarching theme of India's participation at the six-month Expo 2020 Dubai running up to March 2022, Commerce Secretary BVR Subramaniam said the India Pavilion will see participation from a number of Indian states who will be displaying their culture, tradition and tremendous business opportunities along with the top corporate groups from India and the public sector companies. The 11th India-United Kingdom Economic and Financial Dialogue was held virtually on Thursday. Finance Minister Nirmala Sitaraman and the UK Treasury Chancellor Rishi Sunak co-chaired the meeting. The Indian delegation included Governor of Reserve Bank of India, Chairman of Securities and Exchange Board of India, Chairman of International Financial Services Centres Authority, Secretary of Department of Economic Affairs and other representatives from Ministry of Finance, Ministry of External Affairs and Indian High Commission UK. The 11th Economic and Financial Dialogue concluded with adoption of joint statement by the Union Finance Minister and Chancellor of Exchequer of the United Kingdom and release of the joint statement on Climate Finance Leadership Initiative India Partnership. The governors of New York and New Jersey have declared states of emergency amid widespread rains 
flooding as remnants of Hurricane Ida cut a deadly path across the northeast United States on Wednesday. The storm had hit the southern U.S. states of Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama and Florida on Sunday, flooding neighborhoods, causing widespread power outages and killing at least nine people. Almost all the New York City subway sublines were suspended due to the flooding. The Metropolitan Transit Authority website said that only the Seven Line and the Staten Island Railway were operating with delays. Meanwhile, the National Weather Service in New York urged people to stay off the roads. U.S. President Joe Biden is set to meet his Ukrainian counterpart, Volodymyr Zelensky, in the White House on Thursday. Washington has reaffirmed its commitment to Kiev's sovereignty and territorial integrity. Zelensky has been viewing for U.S. support soon after he came to power in 2019. And now a report from the business world. The BSE Sensex gained 514 points or 0.9% to finish at 57,853. The NSE Nifty also surged 158 points or 0.92% to settle at 17,234. Among global markets, Asian stocks closed mixed amid cautious approach of investors. China's Shanghai Composite Index rose 0.8%, Japan's Nikkei 225 gained 0.3% and Hong Kong's Hang Seng added 0.2%. Singapore's Straits Times closed flat, while South Korea's Kospi declined 1%. Major European stocks, FTSE 100, France's CAC and Germany's DAX were trading almost flat in intraday trade. Oil prices rose, supported by a sharp decline in U.S. crude stocks. In intraday trade, Brent crude was trading around $72 per barrel. In the forex market, the rupee appreciated marginally by 2 paise against the U.S. dollar to close at 73 rupees and 7 paise against the U.S. dollar. This is Lalema Aneja Dang for AIR News. In cricket, India were all out for 191 in their first innings against England on the opening day of the fourth test match played at the Oval. In reply, hosts England were 52 for 2, trading by 139 runs when reports last came in. After winning the toss, England bowler pace England bowler Chris Wokes picked up four wickets and Ozzy Robinson took three. For India, Virat Kohli and Shardul Thakur hit 50, scoring 50 and 57 respectively. Earlier, India made two changes to their side. Umesh Yadav and Shardul Thakur came into the side in place of Fishant Sharma and Mohammad Shami, who were down with injuries. England have brought in Ozzy Pope and Chris Wokes in place of Joss Butler and Sam Curran. In the previous game, England had the upper hand and registered an emphatic win by an innings and 77. Six runs. The competition would get intense as the series is leveled one all and both the sides will push their limits to take an unassailable lead. And now let us take a look at the major developments around the world as reported in the foreign press. The Washington Post writes at least nine dead as Hurricane Ida remnants spark floods in New York and New Jersey. The Wall Street Journal reports tens of thousands in Afghanistan are trapped as neighbors close borders. Gulf Times reports Foreign Minister and UK Secretary of State for Foreign Affairs visit temporary facilities housing Afghan citizens. Financial Times reports Biden vows to resist Russian aggression in Ukraine. Financial Times says WhatsApp fined 225 million euros for not telling users how it shared data with Facebook. And Gulf Time reports, UK house prices jumped by almost £5,000 in August. And now a quick look at the headlines once again. India says its immediate focus is to ensure that Afghanistan soil is not used for terrorist activities. External Affairs Minister Dr. S. Jay Shankar meets Slovenian President and Foreign Minister discusses key challenges facing India and European Union. India Defence Minister Rajnath Singh says India will be fully self-reliant in weapons production in next two years. New Delhi extends visa validity for foreign nationals stranded due to COVID-19 pandemic till 30th of September. India Pavilion in Expo 2020 Dubai to start on the 1st of next month. And governors of New York and New Jersey declare states of emergency as death toll from remnants of Hurricane Ida rises to nine. 
India is celebrating the 151st birth anniversary of Mahatma Gandhi. Before we end, let us listen to his favorite bhajan, Vaishnav Jan, by artists from Vietnam on their Independence Day. And with that, we end this bulletin. We'll be back at the same time tomorrow with the next edition of World News.